it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and to what extent the fire is going to come into most any community in a forested or wildland environment. Wildfires can strike quickly and do catastrophic damage to communities, homes, and the human body. All around was just solid orange. I felt like I was in hell. I mean, it was just solid flame in every place there was. The whole fire is coming down! We can get on it! tranquil forests of the United States. During the hot summer months, the forests dry out and become dangerous fuel just waiting to ignite. When man or nature creates a spark, the forests and brushlands can explode into an uncontrollable furnace of raging heat called wildfire. Every year, over three and a half million acres are burned and thousands of structures are lost to wildfires. The threat to the human population has never been more real. But the dangers wildfires pose have not stopped the population from moving into the wildlands where the surrounding vegetation poses a substantial fire risk. One of the things that people like about living out there is it feels like you're in the forest. But if you're going to live in the forest, then you're subject to the dangers of the forest. Elizabeth and Mark Ewing decided to take the risk. They moved from the city and built their dream home in the pristine wilderness of the Malibu Hills. But in November 1993, Elizabeth received a call from her neighboring sister. A fire had broken loose nearby. She called me and said, do you see the smoke? And I said, yeah, I see a little puff of smoke. I can't tell where it is. I wasn't too worried at first, uh, I guess for maybe the first 10 minutes or so. And um, my husband was down in Orange County, and I called him on the car phone and said, there's a, there's a fire, and it's coming this way, and I think you ought to try to get home. Mark Ewing was driving home from work when he received the startling news from Elizabeth. So I said, well, I would try to get home as quickly as I could. So I continued to drive up the coast, and probably about 20 minutes later, I called her again because the smoke seemed to be getting worse and worse because I could actually see it in the distance. I kept watching the smoke and I was amazed at how fast it was developing and getting closer. By an amazing coincidence, Elizabeth had planned a demonstration for that day with Dennis Smaggett, an inventor of a fire suppression system designed to protect homes from being destroyed by wildfires. He and I had made an appointment the week before for him to come and demonstrate his fire protection product, which was very serendipitous. Elizabeth called Dennis on his cell phone. The fire was spreading at an alarming rate. The demonstration would now become a race to save Elizabeth's home. We drove to Elizabeth's house as quickly as possible. The drive up the canyon was nothing less than a nightmare. There were people all over the place. Uh, traffic was horrendous. Police officers were trying to stop everyone to get them to evacuate the area. We had to zig and zag and do everything possible to get around everybody so we could get to Elizabeth's location. While Dennis made his way to her, Elizabeth realized she might have to evacuate once the house had been treated with the fire suppression materials. I immediately started doing the things that you're told to do to prepare for an emergency, like taking the truck out of the garage and backing it up so that it's pointed downhill, and I started putting things in it. First of all were my cats. In the event of a wildfire, experts recommend that you immediately prepare your pets for evacuation. Place your car in the driveway facing out and leave your keys where you can find them. The flames were closing in on Elizabeth and time was running out. Elizabeth was hoping Dennis would arrive in time to save her home and still make it out of the canyon before it was too late. Looking left or right, we would either see smoke or flame which was pretty, uh, pretty frightening as things go. So as we drove up the canyon, we didn't know what we were in for. 
As the intensity of the fire grew, Mark was concerned for Elizabeth and contacted her again on his cell phone. I was getting increasingly anxious for her and uh, asked her was she planning to stay with the house or did she feel that she needed to, to leave. I tried to keep calm and to gather those things that I thought were important. I was, at that point, was having to decide, am I going to leave or am I going to stay? All, all my other neighbors had left. Mark was still desperately trying to reach Elizabeth, but he was about to run into trouble. I proceeded up the mountain, I got about three quarters of the way up, and I ran into a roadblock that was set up by the highway patrol. They would not allow me to pass. Further up the mountain, Dennis finally managed to get through to Elizabeth's house, just before the road closed. But the raging inferno was closing in. They had to act quickly. Once we finally arrived here, we realized the size and scope of our challenge. Looking in one direction about three miles as the crow flies, we saw the fire coming. We saw a wall of flame approximately 200 feet high, and we thought we had about seven minutes to respond. Fire resources were already stretched to the limit. The only hope in saving Elizabeth's house lay in Dennis's invention. The system allows a homeowner to lay a blanket of foam over their home and surrounding vegetation. The foam acts as an insulating barrier and delays the flames from igniting everything it covers. They jumped out of the truck and were busy doing things. He said, I'm, I hope I'm going to save your house. Dennis needed to coat the house and vegetation with a layer of foam. If it didn't work, everything would burn to the ground. I had come in the house and gotten some towels and wet them to put over our heads because it was so hot. And we wanted to stay out there and work as long as we could, but we couldn't stand the heat, so we had those towels over our heads covering our faces. The air temperature was rising quickly. Superheated air can rise to temperatures in excess of 1,000 degrees and is hot enough to burn flesh and scald your lungs. The fire got closer and closer on us. Smoke became more intense. The wind picked up considerably. It came from about 60 miles an hour to an excess of 80 miles an hour. The fire closed in with incredible speed. Elizabeth and Dennis' escape routes were now ablaze. Evacuation was impossible. We looked down to the roads that we would normally evacuate to, and they were burning. All the vegetation around it was burning. There was no way we could go anywhere. The emergency services always recommend that you evacuate as soon as possible. But with the flames surrounding Elizabeth and Dennis, they needed to decide quickly what to do next. Their lives depended on it. The best course of action was to go inside the house. It had been properly covered and pre-treated, as well as the vegetation. It was the safest evacuation point. With just seconds to spare, they retreated into the house. They still did not know if the foam could fend off the intense flames. Elizabeth pulled the blinds down. They act as a barrier and help stop the extreme heat from penetrating the house and igniting the furniture. We were inside the house no more than 10 seconds, and about a 60-foot wall of flame went over the house itself as we were in it. The house was engulfed by the wildfire. No one was sure whether the foam would endure the extreme heat and flames. I could not believe how noisy it was. We had to shout at each other uh, five to ten feet away to make ourselves heard. We didn't know whether that we should just sit down and pray, cut deals with the Almighty. You're so helpless. You can't do anything. You're just at the will of nature thinking, is this it? As the wall of fire moved over the house, Elizabeth and Dennis nervously checked the rooms in case somewhere in the house the flames had caught. It took somewhere between five and ten minutes for the fire to come and pass. That ten minutes time was almost an eternity. I thought uh, very possibly I might die. Eventually, the fire burned its way past. Elizabeth and Dennis stepped outside the house to survey the damage. Elizabeth's home was intact, but the canyons and hills of Malibu had been devastated. The devastation, having everything burned, all, all the vegetation burned. It was like a, a black and white movie. There was no color. Everything was shades of gray. 
lots of dead animals. It's just a, a horrible thing to go through. The fire had ripped its way through 18,000 acres and destroyed 323 buildings. Three people died. It became clear to Elizabeth that Dennis's foam had saved both her house and their lives. The foam sealed the house in a protective barrier. It is made from organic fertilizer and contains natural gums and resins from trees. But key to its effectiveness are the air bubbles generated by the spray pump which insulate the structure from heat and flames. Dennis and his business partner John Breedlove invented the foam system 10 years ago and it has saved up to a hundred homes. But though fire suppression systems like theirs offer invaluable protection for your property, the emergency services always advise civilians to evacuate their homes in the event of a wildfire. Foam systems like Dennis's are designed to protect property, not people. And after foaming your house and the surrounding vegetation, you should always evacuate immediately. Experts also advise to turn your lights on before you leave so that the fire service can locate your home. Listen to the television and radio and have an escape route planned. Drive to a designated spot in an open area clear of vegetation. Mark Mack is a firefighting instructor at the California Fire Academy. I tell the homeowners the best thing you can do to help us help you is to leave. Um, let us do our job. But if you do become trapped, a few important safety measures could help save your life. If a wildland fire is approaching and you have no way of getting out of the area, go inside your, your home, shut all the doors, shut all the windows, remove anything flammable from the windows, and uh, try and get in towards the center of the home. If you do have a house that's full of smoke, we teach everyone, get as low as you can to the ground, get to the floor, that's where the good air is. But fire is an unpredictable element, and even the most prepared individuals can get trapped by the flames. Burns to the flesh and lungs are one of the greatest dangers when this occurs, as a fireman from Malibu would discover firsthand. 